Hey there, Marcus Hutzel here, and I wanted to do a quick video to show you how to ingest multiple USB audio devices into a single audio recording program, like maybe Adobe Audition or Reaper or any other audio DAW workstation. Uh, and I'm going to focus this video primarily on the Mac or Apple operating system because that's usually how I work. I may do another one for Windows, but this is how to do this on Mac. Because if we look at Adobe Audition here, almost every audio program only allows you to have a single audio device as its input. For example, if I had two USB microphones, or let's say I had two USB audio interfaces that I wanted to record at the same time, most audio workstations, digital audio workstations, can't accept both of these as inputs at the same time. And we can see that here in Adobe Audition. If we go up to settings, uh, preferences here, go to audio hardware, we can only select one item as our input. So we can select the MacBook Pro microphone, or maybe my Rode VideoMic NTG, which is connected via USB, or the Rode VideoMic Go 2, which I also have uh, connected via USB, or my Zoom F3 audio recorder, which is sitting on top of that camera, which I have connected via USB. But Audition can only see one of these USB devices at a time. So if I wanted to select my Rode VideoMic NTG, that's great. We click OK, we come into one of our tracks. We can select one of the two audio channels that the Rode VideoMic NTG is sending into the computer. So if we select that, we hit record and we can see my audio level there coming from my Rode VideoMic NTG. But what if I wanted to record the Rode VideoMic Go 2 at the same time in the same session here in Adobe Audition? You may ask why I would want to do that. Well, let's just say I wanted to record and compare two microphones, but I didn't want to have to repeat the lines and I wanted to capture those two microphones at the same time. And sure, you could do that with an external audio recorder and dump it all into the computer and sync and post. And programs like OBS, which I'm recording my screen with, can do this as well. But most people don't have a multi-track external audio recorder and OBS can get quite convoluted with how you need to route things. So let's just do this here in Adobe Audition on my Mac. So all we need to do is create what's called an aggregate audio device in the audio MIDI setup settings in Mac OS. So we go to Finder, we go to our Applications folder, and if it's not here on the left, you can go up to Go and choose Applications right there. And it's actually under a folder called Utilities. Here in the Applications folder, there's Utilities and there's Audio MIDI Setup. So you open that up and that looks like this here. So we're going to simply hit the plus in the bottom left corner, hit create aggregate device. And now we can choose however many audio sources want to come into this aggregate device. So I'm going to select both my Rode VideoMic NTG. There's one, it puts it up here at the top. I'm going to select my Rode VideoMic Go 2. It selects it and puts it at the top. You can see two sub devices here. And I also want to connect my Zoom F3 audio recorder which is currently taking in the audio from my Rode NTG5. The NTG5 is an XLR only microphone, but I wanted to get it into the computer to compare against my other two Rode microphones. You can see here, I've got all three microphones mounted basically in the same position directly over my computer monitor and all connected via their various cables. The Rode VideoMic Go 2 and the Rode VideoMic NTG with long USB cables going down to my computer and the Rode NTG5 going XLR over to the Zoom F3 recorder sitting on top of my camera. And I'm not recording directly on the Zoom F3, it's being fed out to my camera for this recording, plus it's then going into my computer via USB. So we can scroll through our list here and find the Zoom F3 driver, it's right there. So we add that as an input. Now generally I leave everything else alone. Uh, if Mac OS selects drift correction, I just kind of leave that alone. Everything's generally fine when you do that. So we've now coupled together three input devices into that one aggregate device. And let's scroll down on our list here. And it's still called aggregate device. I'm going to rename this. I'm going to call it Rode Mics times three because I've actually got three Rode Mics or you could call it um, Rode Mics plus Zoom F3. Let's do that. Rode mics plus the Zoom F3. So any other audio that I put into the Zoom F3 and that second input would also show up. But let's just use these three as an example. So we've got that there now. We can come back to Adobe Audition. We're going to go back up to the Adobe Audition menu, hit settings, general, go to our audio hardware. 
and sometimes this takes a second for the Mac OS operating system to update so where it will show up in your audio program. But let's see if it shows up. We'll click our default input and we will come down to, there it is, Rode mics plus a Zoom F3. Now I'm going to leave my output to whatever I want my output to be. I'm gonna leave it on USB audio codec, which is actually my Thunderbolt dock. Output your audio from your program wherever you need to hear it. I'll click OK. Now in our inputs for each track, we can do this in the uh, track view, or I like to do it in the mixer view. So track one, if we come up to the inputs here, click on that, and now we see all of the inputs available from those devices. So I've got my Rode VideoMic NTG front and center, which is kind of the left channel of the Rode VideoMic NTG, and I have input two of the Rode VideoMic NTG. I'm just going to select the main front and center. I'll do the same thing on the second track, except I will select now my Video Mic Go 2. It only has one audio channel, so we'll select that there. And lastly, I need to bring in my Rode NTG5 via the Zoom F3 recorder up there, so I'll click there, mono. And I'm on input one on the Zoom F3, so I'll click input one. And we don't see anything yet, because we need to hit record. Check one, two, there is our uh, Rode Video Mic NTG. I'll hit record on the uh, Rode Video Mic Go 2, and I'll hit record on the Zoom F3. All right, so how do we know that these three individual audio inputs are legitimately those sources as they sit here on my desk? I always just do a scratch test. So I'm going to scratch uh, very quietly on the Rode Video Mic NTG. You can see it right there. It's the strongest signal because I'm scratching directly on it. Uh, I can scratch on the Rode Video Mic Go 2 or second input, and then I can scratch on the NTG5 going through the Zoom F3. And I can also uh, monitor this in my headphones. So I'm going to mute my speakers there so that that audio, when I hit this little eye, doesn't come out of my speakers. And if you're not familiar with most audio programs, you can generally hit a button on the track and it will send the incoming audio out of your monitoring device. And you really don't want to do that with speakers because you'll get this effect most of the time if your speakers are too loud. That's feedback. So I'm going to mute my speakers and that sends the audio to my headphones. So now I can hear that in my headphones. There's a slight delay because of my buffer size in Adobe Audition, but yeah, if I scratch the NTG5, I only hear that and We'll solo the, uh, what's this one? This is the Rode Video Mic Go 2. I hear that. When I scratch the others, I don't hear it, which means that is indeed the Video Mic Go 2. And then we'll hit uh, I, which will send the first track to my headphones, and that should be the Video Mic NTG. I hear that. And when I scratch on the other mics, I don't hear it. So that verifies for me that those three USB inputs are now coming into Adobe Audition. They sound good and they are at good levels. So then we can just hit record. Now I'm recording with all three of these microphones at the same time. And this is helpful for me if I obviously want to record these into my computer directly and not have to use an external recorder, pop the card out, put it into the computer, copy the files, and then dump it to a program. I'm recording directly into Adobe Audition. I can then solo each microphone when I listen back and my voice will always be the same. So this is a way to do that in the computer without having to possibly make mistakes when you need to say the line again. And I might as well let you hear these three different mics since I am recording them this way. So this is a test of the semi-emergency Rode microphone recording system using aggregate devices in Mac OS to get all three of these microphones into my computer via USB while switching between them during this video edit so you can hear the differences between microphone one, microphone two, and microphone three. And that's all I had to say about that, at least for now. And of course, most field recorders, like I'm using the Zoom F3, can be used as USB audio devices, so you don't always have to deal with removing SD cards and inserting them and copying files. However, you can't exactly plug USB-only microphones into a field recorder, so using an aggregate device is a way to get different types of devices into your computer at the same time. And real quick, let's do this with uh, two USB audio interfaces instead. So I've got a Behringer UMC22 and I've got a Scarlett 2i2. Let me get these hooked up and I'll show you how to do that once again using USB audio interfaces instead. Stand by. All right, so I've got the USB audio interfaces hooked up now. I'm going to use uh, a Shure SM58 
into the Scarlett 2i2 via this orange cable, and I'm going to use uh, the Shure MV7X into the Behringer UMC22. And again, we'll take both of these into Adobe Audition. So we come back to audio MIDI setup here in Mac OS. Let's add a new aggregate device. And then we'll find our Scarlett 2i2. There it is right there at the bottom. Now the problem with the Behringer interfaces is they don't say Behringer. They're usually called USB audio codec and they're almost all called USB audio codec with a capital A because my Thunderbolt dock, which also has an audio input output card on it, is also called USB audio codec, but I've just come to learn that the Kensington dock that I'm using is called USB audio codec with a lowercase a right here. So I know that that's not the UMC22. So where is the UMC22? Let's come down and find it. Here is USB audio codec. There's two of them here, but if we look over here, we can see it has inputs and outputs. We need the USB audio codec that has the inputs because I don't care about the outputs in this situation. So this seems to be it right here. There are two inputs, USB audio codec with a capital A. We'll select that. And now we've got the Scarlett 2i2 USB and USB audio codec with the capital A up there. Now, a good practice is obviously always to rename this aggregate device. It's just called aggregate device. So we'll call this 2i2 and UMC22 like that. We'll come back to Adobe Audition. I will disable these recording buses because those are still my three Rode mics. We'll go back to preferences, go to audio hardware. Now we need to search for that new aggregate device we just created. We called it 2i2 and UMC22. There it is. I'm going to hit OK. Uh, let's do this down here. Let's just call this UMC22, which is the MV7X. And we'll call this one 2i2 SM58. I will click the input, go down to mono. Now we see the Scarlett and the USB audio codec. So again, this one is the UMC22. I've got an input one, which is the left input. We'll select that. And the 2i2. I've got it in input one, we'll select that. I like to go to the mixer view here. We'll click on record on the UMC 22. I will turn up my gain and hey, look at that. There it is. I'll once again, put my headphones on, make sure my speakers are muted. Check one, two, I hear myself, sounds good. We will then click on record bus on the 2i2 and we will talk into this SM58, let's Solo it on the headphones real quick through Audition. Check one, two. I hear that just fine. I'll set my input gain here for the MV7X. Check one, two. Hey, one, two, 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 two. It's going to need almost all the gain at the current distance I am from that microphone. Then we will also gain up the SM58. I'm pretty far from the SM58. I'm not too worried about gain levels right now for this test. Again, it's just an example of how to get both of these USB audio interfaces into your digital audio workstation at a time. So we'll go back to the main view here. We'll mute all of our other tracks that we recorded previously. And we'll come down here to the end. We'll hit record. And now I'm recording into Adobe Audition using the Behringer UMC22 with this Shure MV7X. And at the same time, I am recording into Adobe Audition using the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 with this Shure SM58. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you take multiple USB audio devices into your digital audio workstation. This isn't exactly new, but as long as I've been a Mac user, I just had never tried it. And this is a way to do that very, very easily. And I will hit stop. Now, unfortunately, this does not work in online meeting software like Zoom or Google Meets. If we take a look at our Zoom settings here, we can see, let me choose my 2i2 and UMC22 device, like we just set it up, taking in, hopefully, this MV7X via the UMC22 and this Shure SM58 via the Scarlett 2i2. So we've selected that in Zoom, and let's open up the Zoom audio settings to see our meters. We see movement, but what, what audio are we actually getting? Well, let me show you something. Let me unplug the SM58 from the Scarlett. Now I get nothing into Zoom. There is no audio going into Zoom, but yet I can see my meters here on the UMC22 coming from the MV7, clipping out the preamp. So we know that audio is getting in there. And if I listen to the direct monitor, 
out of the uh, UMC22, I can hear myself there. So I know the microphone is working. So why aren't we getting any audio into Zoom? And that's because Zoom, Google Meets, all of the current meeting platforms, at least of the recording of this video, they only really look at the first audio device, even if you select an aggregate device within Zoom. So again, if we look at our aggregate device here in audio MIDI settings, yes, it has two, but if you look right here where it says subdevices, USB audio codec is the first device. It's on the left signifying that it's the first device in that chain, whereas the Scarlet is the second device. So if we go back to Zoom, even though we select our 2i2 and UMC22, and we go back to the audio settings here, check, check, we get that input, but again, no input there. Now we can change that in audio MIDI setup. If we go back to audio MIDI and we take the Scarlet and we drag it over here to the beginning. There, now the Scarlet is the first in the chain, but now Zoom is just going to ignore the UMC22. So if I turn my gain down here on the Scarlet, we're not getting that because the gain's all the way down, but we also don't get this. So it's not really helpful in online meeting platforms with the way they currently work. It's going to look at that first device. Now we obviously can still use both of the inputs or however many inputs we have on our device for this Zoom call, for instance. So I can have the SM58 plugged into channel one. I can take my MV7X and plug it into channel two of the Scarlet, and we'll do these one at a time. Check, 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 one, two. We can see the audio meters there on the SM58. And if I turn that down, now we can see the audio meters there on the Shure MV7, both going through the Scarlet while that aggregate device is selected in Zoom. But that kind of defeats the purpose why use an aggregate device as your input into a meeting platform if it's only going to really see the first device in that chain. So it's really no different in this particular example than just choosing the Scarlet as our main interface because we can only use one at a time. So not really useful for online meeting software, I use this process more for recording various USB devices and microphones into my audio recording software, and it works very well for uh, that use. So anyway, I hope this information was helpful, and uh, I will see you next time. Later.